Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 4, Lesson 4 on the absolute value of a number. The absolute value, not just the value, but the absolute value of a number. Now, you probably have never been exposed to the idea of the absolute value of a number. And you never needed to. Because all you ever worked with in math courses before 6th grade were positive numbers. Right? Five cookies, 12 and a half gallons, things like that. Those are all positive numbers. But once negative numbers come into play, then we get to introduce this concept called absolute value. So today we're going to learn about absolute value. We're going to learn about the symbol that tells you that you're dealing with absolute value. And we'll also kind of work with like at least a couple practical applications of it. Anyway, let's jump right into it so to learn what this concept is all about. Here we go. Positive and negative numbers are opposite in the sense that they lie on opposite sides of zero on the number line. All right. So just really quick, exercise number one. This is just kind of a, a thought experiment. Let's take a look. Although it may look strange, how would you interpret negative negative 10? What would it be equal to and why? All right. See if you can write something down for this. I bet you're going to have the right answer. Pause the video now. All right. Well, if the negative symbol is literally telling us, hey, this number is just like this one, but it's on the opposite side of the origin on a number line, right? Then it stands to reason that negative negative 10 must be equal to positive 10. Because positive 10 lies on the opposite side of zero from negative 10. All right. So the negative of a negative is the positive. And then if I did another negative, we'd go back to the other side again. So like if I put another parenthesis and another negative, then I'd be back at negative 10. Right? Each time we negate a number, it just sort of like flips it across the origin to the exact same location but on the other side of zero. All right. That being said, now let's kind of look back at that plotting of numbers on a number line in the second exercise. Let's take a look at this. Right? And we're going to talk about the distance a number is from the origin. Exercise number two. Plot and label the following numbers on the number line below. All right. Well, that's a piece of cake, right? So pause the video right now, plot all five of these numbers on the number line, and label them with their letters. All right, well, we've been doing this for a few lessons now. Let's put A at 7. That's really quite easy. So here we are. A is at 7. B is at negative 3. C is at negative 10. D is at our origin, 0. And E is at 6. All right, so that's a piece of cake. Now. All right, we want to think about what the distance a number line is from the origin. And distance is always a positive number, all right? So, you know, when I'm traveling to New York City, I travel 100 miles. I can't travel negative 100 miles. It literally doesn't make any sense. So, the second part of this question asks us to talk about or to figure out how far, what the distance is each one of these numbers is from the origin, literally. How far is each of these numbers from the origin, the zero mark? Remember, distance can only be positive. So, all right, take a minute, shouldn't take any more than that, and fill those distances in down there. All right, piece of cake. Well, point A is seven units away from the origin, right? It's got a distance of seven units from the origin. Now, point B, right? That's got a distance of 3 units from the origin. Point C, that's a distance of 10 units from the origin. Point D is right on the origin, so it's 0 units from the origin. And point E is 6 units from the origin. All right. What we have literally found here are the absolute values of each of these numbers. That's all absolute value is. Absolute value is the distance that a number is from the origin. 
And notice, you know, some of these are very easy, like, like point E is six units from the origin and it's plotted at six. Letter A is seven units from the origin and it's plotted at seven. Right, on the other hand, C is plotted at negative 10, which puts it 10 units from the origin. Likewise, B, plotted at negative three, is three units from the origin. All right, but all absolute value is, and we'll even show you the symbols in just a moment, all absolute value is, is simply how far from zero the number is plotted on the number line. That's it, and it's always positive, with the exception of the fact that it could be zero, all right? All right, the absolute value of a number. If A is any rational number, then those two vertical bars around A represent its absolute value, which is its distance away from zero on the number line. All right, so let, let's talk about this a little bit. Um, anytime you see a number in these two vertical bars, okay, it's like trapped, right? Then that is literally referring to the distance the number is away from the origin. So for example, the absolute value of negative 12 is equal to 12. If I plotted 12, negative 12 on a number line, it would be 12 units from the origin, right? Likewise, if I plot the number negative four on a number line, right, and then it's inside of what are called the absolute value bars, well, the absolute value of negative four is simply four, okay? 125, well, how far is 125 from zero? That's 125, right? You know, that, that, that's almost painfully obvious, right? Same thing with 75, right? How far is 75 away from the origin when you're plotted? Well, it's 75. The absolute value of negative 32, well, how far is negative 32 from the origin? It's 32. Maybe the trickiest one of all, the absolute value of zero. Well, how far is zero away from zero? Well, it's zero. Now, you might have noticed something, all right? And a lot of people end up thinking about absolute value this way, but make no doubt about it. Absolute value really truly represents the distance that a number is away from zero, all right? But what you may have noticed is that whenever a negative number is inside of the absolute value, the absolute value basically turns it into the positive version. So absolute value of negative 12 is 12. Absolute value of negative four is four. And when the number inside of an absolute value is positive, well then the absolute value literally doesn't do anything. The absolute value of 125 is 125. The absolute value of 75 is 75. The absolute value of zero is zero. We think of absolute value as not just being how far from the origin a number is, but also sort of how big it is. And when I say big, I don't mean greater than or less than. I mean like the size of the number. How big is it? Like, you know, negative 200. That's 200 units big. They happen to be 200 units to the left of the origin instead of the right of the origin, but it's got a size of 200. So, Absolute value, the size of a number, or the distance it is from zero when plotted on a number line. Let's take a look at this a little bit more. All right, now, just like we can compare numbers, we can compare the absolute values of numbers. But keep in mind when we're you know, comparing the absolute value of numbers, we're now really just comparing positive numbers, right? So all absolute values are positive, they're all distances. So let's take a look at exercise number four. Fill in each circle below with a greater than, less than, or equal sign to make the statement true. Rewrite using the value of the absolute values in each case. The first is done as an example. So let's take a look at the first one. Right, I'm comparing the absolute value of 10 to the absolute value of negative 15. Literally, I'm kind of saying, hey, compare how far 10 and negative 15 are from the origin. Right, that's really what that question is doing. And what I find, right, because the absolute value of 10 is 10, and the absolute value of negative 15 is 15, that the absolute value of 10 is less than the absolute value of negative 15. It's true, right? 10 is closer to the origin than negative 15 is. That's all that question is getting at. And it's the same idea here. If I'm comparing the absolute value of negative six and negative two, that really means I'm comparing six and two. Really, and that means I have a greater than symbol there. 
let's do one more together then have you fill in the rest of them on your own, the absolute value of negative 8 versus the absolute value of 8. Well, how would you compare those two numbers in terms of their distance from the origin? Well, they're equal distance from the origin. They happen to be on opposite sides of it, but they're still equal distance from the origin. So I put an 8 down. And like literally, right, what's justifying them are these kind of statements below. All right, pause the video now and see if you can get the correct comparison in each one of the circles. All right, absolute value of negative 25 versus absolute value of 20. Well, the absolute value of 25, negative 25 is 25. The absolute value of 20 is 20. There's our greater than, easy enough. Let me move these things up, right? Now we're comparing the absolute value of zero to the absolute value of negative seven, right? The absolute value of zero is zero. The absolute value of seven is, uh, negative seven is seven, and zero is less than negative seven. We'll just keep going along. Absolute value of negative 12 versus absolute value of 16. That's really 12 versus 16, and that's less than. The absolute value of 14 compared to the absolute value of negative five is really a comparison of 14 and five. That's greater than. And here, the absolute value of 20 is 20. The absolute value of negative 20 is also 20. So that's just equal. All right, All right. It's pretty much that simple. All right. And again, it is kind of nice, not just to write these things down, but to really think about this as how far is this number away from the origin, right? And that's particularly kind of interesting to think about when you've got a comparison like this, where 20 and negative 20 you know, if we were just comparing the raw numbers, 20 and negative 20, no doubt 20 is greater than negative 20, right? If it's 20 degrees outside, that's much warmer than if it's negative 20 degrees outside. But how far they lie away from the origin, well, that's equal, all right? Let's keep looking at this with a practical example. And yeah, you can get a practical example. Exercise number five. When we keep track of how much money a person has in a bank account, there could be a positive amount, known as a credit, and there could be a negative amount, known as a debt. David has a balance of negative 350 in his account, which is a debt, and Juan has a balance of 250, a credit, in his account. Now, let, let's just talk about this a little bit, right? You're in sixth grade. You might have a savings account that your parents set up for you. Hopefully that savings account doesn't have a negative balance in it. But the idea here is really that David owes his bank some money, right? He has less than zero dollars in there. He's got negative 350. He's in trouble, you know. On the other hand, Juan has a nice balance of $250, right? The bank doesn't owe him anything. He's got $250 that he can use for whatever. Let's take a look at letter A. Who has a greater amount of money in his account, David or Juan, justify using an inequality? All right. Pause the video now, answer this question, and write down an inequality that justifies whatever you end up answering. Well, it's pretty simple. Juan has a greater amount of money in his checking account. You know, who would you rather be, David or Juan? I would much rather be Juan in this case because 250 is greater than negative 350. Right? It's that simple, right? Even if Juan had zero amount of money in his account, he'd still have more than David because David has a negative amount of money, right? David's gonna actually have to put money into his account in order to even just get up to zero. Now let's look at B. If Juan gave all his credit to David, would it be enough to pay off David's debt? Justify your answer using an inequality. All right, well, Think about this for a second. You got a yes, no answer, and then you have to justify either yes or no with an inequality. Pause the video now and see what you can write down. Well, the answer is no, right? The answer is no. And how would you justify it? Well, think about this. Let's, let's talk about how you can't justify it. You couldn't really justify it by saying, well, because David's got negative 350 and Juan's got 250, so that's greater. But, you know, you really would want to say, well, no, because David has a greater debt 
than what Juan has as a balance, right? And now what we're really talking about is how far away from zero they are. Right? So the answer is going to be no, simply because the absolute value of negative 350 is greater than the absolute value of 250. Right? Or, you know, likewise, you could say the absolute value of 250 is less than the absolute value of negative 350. But it's really all about absolute values, right? It's about the size of David's debt versus the size of Juan's credit. And since the size of David's debt is greater than the size of Juan's credit, then Juan's credit would not be enough to pay off David's debt. Let's take a look at the last piece of this problem. If Sophia started with a credit of $300 in her account and wrote a check for $370, what would her account balance be? Explain. All right, pause the video now and see if you can come up with an answer to this problem. All right, well, I'm hoping, right, this maybe is getting a little bit ahead of things, but I'm hoping many of you said negative $70. Probably should have put the, the dollar symbol in there first instead of doing it retroactively. It would be negative $70. How would you explain this? Well, you might say, right, that $300 of credit would pay off $300 of the check. But then Oh, I shouldn't say we, I should say Sophia. But then Sophia would have a debt of $70, which ends up being negative 70. Now, eventually in seventh grade math, you're gonna learn how to about add, subtract, multiply, and divide negative and positive numbers. And eventually, you'll see that 300 minus 370 gives you negative 70. But for us, just thinking about it in terms of greater than zero and less than zero, right? She's got $300 in her account, she writes a check for 370, so whatever, you know, she goes to a, uh, I don't know, a grocery store, buys a lot of groceries apparently, Right? So she writes that check, you know, the, the, the person goes to cash it, the bank says, hey look, here's $300, but now she's down to zero, you know, we're going to give you another $70, and now her account has a debt of 70, which goes in as a negative. All right, let's wrap this up. You saw a very important idea for the first time in today's lesson, that's the idea of absolute value. An absolute value can really be interpreted in two different ways. You can either think of it as the distance that a number is away from zero or the origin when plotted on a number line. Since distance is always positive, absolute value is always positive, with the exception of zero. You can also think about it as being the size of a number, kind of irrespective of whether it's positive or negative. And that's kind of great because then the absolute value of negative 50 and the absolute value of 50 are exactly the same thing. They're 50. That's how big the number is. The negative and the positive simply tells you whether it lies to the right of the origin or it lies to the left of the origin. All right, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.